Hi, I'm Shay Shay. I'm a singer, songwriter, actress, all of the above. But I'm also a mother. And I feel like I need to share my experience as a mom so far, especially a new mom, um, where I am now in life what I've been up to, what I am doing, and just share with you a little bit about me and things that people may not have known, and just kind of start taking off the layers in this episode. I didn't know my dad for a while until I got into my teenage years I didn't really know who he was although he came around a lot when I was much younger I couldn't remember him I was raised by my mum predominantly and my brothers and my sister um I'm the last mm -hmm. of four children and the mm -hmm. age gap between mm -hmm. myself and my brother is huge so I kind of came along like randomly unexpected unplanned unwanted in some degree I remember being child-minded a lot, left with different types of nannies and aunties and family members and friends and all these kind of things. And that's mainly because my mom was having to provide for the four of us on her own. At that time, she was no longer with my dad. And I remember she had like five jobs and being like from Nigeria in the, I think she came to London in the late sixties, seventies. And, um, it was hard for Nigerian families and black people in general in the UK at that time. And so when my brothers and my sister were born, obviously they didn't, they didn't have it easy at all. By the time I came along, obviously we had, you know, moved to this big, nice house. And, um, but my mom was still working her ass off trying to support and provide for all of us. Mm -hmm. So I had it a bit easier than my brothers and sisters, but it was still hard for my mom, especially. And so I was passed around a lot, being looked after by different people, different personalities, different energies, different vibes. And I think I kind of adopted all of that growing up and resented my mom a little bit, resented my dad 100%. And also I didn't have an identity that I was sure about, you know, not knowing my dad, not being just stable in one place, growing up with a family unit. Um, it was horrible and it was hard, but I know that it wasn't really my mom's fault. It was just what she had to do so that she could work. And she had like four or five jobs at one point. I never got to see my mom at all. These traumas started to express themselves as I got older and as I started making certain types of friends and as I started going into the world on my own and becoming more independent, I started to see that actually it was normal to have a secure unit, a family unit, and it was good. And I remember coming home to my mom one day and just crying and saying like, why don't we have, why don't I have a normal family? Like why, you know, I've just been to so-and-so's house and it was such a warm setting. And I remember crying my eyes out and my mom didn't even answer me, right? Um, now, I feel like obviously it was a very ungrateful expression, but at the time it was just so real to me and it was a real question and I really did feel more empty than ever. And then I really started resenting my dad even more. Um, when my mom passed away, it was just like, I had lost my mom and my dad. It's just a big blow. So now I was like, I definitely didn't know who I was anymore. And this was in my late 20, uh, my mid twenties. And I just felt so lost, even more lost than ever before. And so I just kind of spiraled out of control and did all kinds of things. Today I was this person, tomorrow I was that person. And I wanted to be this today. And the next day I wanted to be that. And it was just a, such a confusing existence at one point in my life. And I knew that I needed something to hold on to, something that was mine, something that could make me, help me to, to, to realize who I was, something that I could pour all my love that was innately in me into, that I never really got to feel from my parents or even express to anybody, you know, um, fully. And at that point, I was like, okay, I, you know what? I want a family. I want to do everything that my mom didn't do. I want to do it. You know, everything that I feel like she failed in, I want to do it right. Are you right? Okay. She showed me love. She brought me up to be hardworking, self-sufficient, a go-getter, strong. She prepared me for being without her one day. 
that's one thing I can definitely say. But what she didn't prepare me for was, you know, how to like love and how to um, just kind of be soft and vulnerable and sensitive and, you know, and so it, it, I was just kind of had to be hard my whole life and protect myself and, you know, do all these things. And, but I knew that I needed something. So at first it was all about my music and I poured my love, my life, my energy, everything into music, the passion, the drive, everything into my music. Um, but at the same time, going into the music industry, all I felt and all I saw and all I experienced was dog eat dog, shark, backstabbing, this one, that one, like vanity, um, shallowness, just just horrible people in the music industry that I loved so much. And I don't think I loved the music industry. I loved music. I love music. But it was also not a safe space for me, the environment of music. It was also another environment of me just kind of being lost and not knowing where my identity was or who I really was and easily being swallowed up by the lights and the smoke screens. So again, it became a feeling of feeling empty. You know, it became a place that I started to resent the people I started to resent them. Um, and I'm not going to say having a child <laughs> it was like my escape or my, you know, thing, but it has changed me and it has helped me to see and feel what love is really supposed to be. Um, at this point, I would, I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but here in this place, in this part of my life that I'm in now as a mom, I look at my child and I think, I am never gonna leave you with anybody, which is why she goes everywhere with me. She's like my handbag. I am never going to chase your father away or tell you anything negative about your father. You know, you always have access to him and he will always have access to you because these are things that I didn't have. Um, I look at her and I think, you make me want to be better. You make me want to do better. You are my safe space. You are my safe place. You are my, you are my everything. Like all the love that I had bottled up inside me, I get to express it on her, you know. Um, and I'm never leaving her with any auntie, uncle, friend, family, like, it's never going to happen. I mean, I have a great family support, and they look after her every now and again, but yeah, leaving her for more than a day is never going to happen. It made me definitely more independent, more self-sufficient, strong, resilient, um, and it's also made me very, very determined to give my daughter a different type of life and a different type of upbringing. I'm not mad at how I've turned out because I went left, but I came all the way back right again. Like some people go left and they never come back, right? The trauma eats them up so much that they never find out who they are. They never discover themselves again. They never come out of it. But I, I, went, I went through the madness and I've come back onto you know, a path that actually, you know, I can say I love and I'm proud of right now. Um, and I'm more determined than ever. That's what having a child does to you. It kind of makes you look at life differently. It makes you say, right, <laughs> you know what? Everything I've been through, I had to go through so that my child wouldn't go through it. And that's exactly where I am right now. So, yeah, um, that's it. That's it. You know, she deserves everything good. And also picking the right man to have a child with is very, very important. I feel like it's more important than picking the right man to marry. Trust me, because you can get rid of your husband, but you cannot get rid of your child. You understand? It's what you create, it's what you have to live with forever. You understand? So, you know, be very, very, very careful mm -hmm. and think very, very well before you just go and carry belly for any man. As a mother, what I want to dif do differently is probably think m think more about what I say and what I do before I do it. Um, as a mother, I, I said to you before, I want to definitely be there more for my child and kind of let her, you know, just kind of express who she is and and help her to find out who she is so that she doesn't have to go out and try and find her identity in false things 
things that maybe you know are, are you know not serving her which is what I did when I was younger and you know growing up so far motherhood has been really good uh, it's been challenging Wake, I haven't slept a full night's sleep in over a year. So from when I was pregnant till now that she's 11 months, um, I have not slept a full night. She still wakes up in the middle of the night. You have to, you know, that whole thing when they get sick, you two, you get sick, you're worried, you're scared. That thing of running into the room every two minutes to see if she's still breathing that thing of when they start crawling and they start putting everything in their mouth and you're like, oh my God, you know, when you see a big chunk of paper or like one day, oh my God, I changed her nappy. Guess what I saw in her poo? A rubber band. I know some of you be thinking, oh my God, that is so neglectful, that is so irresponsible of you. But honestly, these kids, you cannot, like, there is nobody on this earth that can literally keep their eye on a child 24 7 they're so fast they're so quick the best thing you can do is literally just like vacuum the floor every like maybe two three times a day that is it where the rubber band came from hmm, i bought rubber bands for her hair you know those tiny little multicolored rubber bands so probably one of them fell on the floor when i was doing her hair one day that's how the thing ended up in her poo but we thank God that the thing actually came out in her poo and it did not lodge somewhere in an organ. And, you know, God, I don't even want to think about it. But, yeah, that's the drama right now. Like, you know, feeding like five times a day because she eats a lot, making sure they don't fall down and bang their head. Like if you like for me now, I have meetings, I have shows, I have events, I have business that I need to handle. Who's going to look after them? Where are you going to leave your child? Is it say you have to carry her along and start explaining to people that I just had a baby. Sorry. Can I just bring my child? It's like sometimes you find yourself over explaining, you know, and nobody asked you. You just think, oh, I got to explain. And, you know, sometimes when you go shopping, for whether for clothes or groceries and you've got to put the baby in the chair, the car seat, then when you get home and you look at back and you look at all the bags that you have and you're thinking oh my god what do I take up first the clothes or the baby and if I take the baby upstairs first how do I come you know will I it's like it is so hectic it's so hectic so all of that drama drama you know but I love it I really love it I feel like a normal person for the first time in years like I do um so that's one of the reasons why I miss Nigeria, actually, because I have my help there. I have nanny, I have house help, I have chef, I have everything that I need in Nigeria. So like when we're in Nigeria, I'm always getting to relax and just put my feet up. Obviously, being a mother, you can't let go too much because those ones too, you know how it can be. You can't just leave your child with anybody. Um, but it's much easier in Nigeria. In London, it's everybody for themselves you know that kind of thing in london that's how everybody is but you know how it goes i feel i feel very responsible i feel grown i feel like oh my god you know and i feel like just doing so much is not a burden it's a joy it's a pleasure like i love it i love running around after her i don't like vacuuming the floor three times a day but ever since i saw that rubber band in her poo trust me that shook the hell out of me i was like god damn what else has she eaten? She eats paper a lot too. Well, I need to get her off of that because I don't know what that paper thing is. Guess what she eats? She eats chargers. You know, phone cable, charger. <laughs> so one day I was like, why does she eat chargers so much? She bought like three of our chargers. And I was like, why does she eat chargers so much? What is it about the, 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 the actual charging point that she likes so much? I put it in my mouth and it shocked me. And I was like, is this what this girl is eating, sucking on. She literally sucks on it. And the electricity is in there because that's what gives the, the phone the power. And I, I quickly removed it from my mouth because it actually shocked me. And I was like, this girl actually loves it. Like, she's some bionic child. I don't know what she loves about it. I don't even know why it doesn't affect or hurt her because shit hurt me. But, you know, stuff like that, it's crazy. It's crazy. She loves spaghetti bolognese. That's her favorite food. And now that she has like four teeth, she's um she's just munching on everything, chewing everything. Um, I tried indomie with her. Don't tell nobody. 
uh, my sister, she almost slapped me. She was like, Indomie, how can you give a baby Indomie? And I was like, please, Indomie is Indomie. Who doesn't eat Indomie? Is it because she's in London? She was in Niger. <laughs> she go eat Indomie from morning to night, I think. But she loves spaghetti bolognese and she loves um, vegetables. She loves vegetables a lot. So that's good. Yeah, it's been a joy. It's been a pleasure. Um, I'm, I've never been happier, as you can see. She's trying to walk now. So she's like pulling herself up on things and walking around. And then sometimes she even stands up on her own. And she'll be looking around like, can you see me? Can anybody see me? Yes, clap for me. I'm standing up. They will clap for her and then she'll just fall back on her bum again. But yeah, she's so great. Like, she's the reason why... I am working harder than ever. Like, I'm on beast mode right now. I've got my fingers. I've got one finger in the corporate pie, one finger in the fashion and design pie, one finger in the music pie, one finger in the entrepreneurial pie. I got, like, I got my sh everywhere. I went and got a certificate while I was pregnant. I started, I started a um, hospitality business. I recorded two albums worth of material i you know like listen i've achieved so much I'm, i've never been more proud of myself than now like if you're thinking of having a kid and you are ready please don't hesitate because nobody can explain to you the joy that you will feel when you have one don't have a kid to try and pour out your um emotions like you know the toxic ones <laughs> And the good ones. No, you don't pour those, those, the, your emptiness into a child. You have a child when you feel like you're so full that you need to share it. And that's what I did. And honestly, it's the best experience ever. But also don't rush. Yeah, don't rush it. But definitely do it if you feel ready. Um, it motivates some people to do more. And some people, it's like when they've done so much that the one thing left that they have to do is have a child, is, is, is have it, is, you know, is what they do. And that, and it's like kind of like two ends of the spectrum in that sense. So, but either end of the spectrum that you are on, having a kid is a joy. It's a joy. And I see life so differently now. I'm really excited. So happy Mother's Day to all of you mothers out there. And happy Father's Day too, please. You know, Mother's Day, Father's Day, whatever. But because it is Mother's Day, I'm saying happy Mother's Day too. Soon to be mothers, mothers already. And, um, you know, those of you that are thinking about being a mother, I'm not quite sure yet. I hope that I've inspired you. And I hope you can see how full of joy I am and my smile, you know. <laughs>